Aloha. Aloha! Welcome to Kencho Quest. In this video, I'm going to show you what to pack for Hawaii or any beach vacation with a baby, toddler, or kid. Both of our kids were born in Hawaii, so they've been going to the beach and playing in the ocean ever since they were little babies. Right now, our family of four is traveling full time, and we just spent a week at a beach bungalow on Phu Quoc Island in Vietnam. So I'm gonna show you what we packed for this beach getaway, and then I'm gonna share some local tips for if you're visiting Hawaii. Aloha! Aloha. Welcome to Kensho Quest. We're a full-time traveling family currently in Vietnam. Um, Please subscribe for packing tips and travel inspiration. And give us some thumbs up. First of all, bring your aloha spirit and compassion. Get ready to relax. Things might not be as high tech or fast paced as you're used to, so get ready to enjoy things on island time. Now let's look at what to pack. First up, you'll want to bring either a swim diaper or a swimsuit. This is a reusable cloth swim diaper, and it's important to keep in mind that the main purpose of the swim diaper is just to catch those number twos so they don't end up in a swimming pool. And a lot of the swimming pools in Hawaii do require babies or toddlers who aren't potty trained yet to wear a swim diaper when they're in the pool. This one's from Blueberry Diapers and it unsnaps on the side, which is convenient in case you do need to clean up your baby. If you have a toddler or a kid who's no longer in diapers, then go ahead and bring them a swimsuit. What we like to do for both of our kids is pair either swim diaper or swim trunks on the bottom along with a long sleeve rash guard. We found this is one of the best ways to get sun protection for them. Instead of having to lather them all completely up in sunscreen, a long sleeve rash guard helps protect their arms. And this cool swimsuit has it all built in. It's a swimsuit with long sleeve sun protection. Here's my son's swim trunks and a long sleeve rash guard. I like to bring at least two swim outfits for each child because often after we go to the beach, we'll rinse these out in the sink and then hang them up to dry. And by the time it's time to go to the beach again, they may still be wet. So it's nice for them to have an extra swimsuit that's dry and ready for them to put on. You try putting a wet swimsuit onto a toddler who doesn't want to wear it. The next article of sun protection to bring is a full coverage sun hat. This one for our daughter has this piece on the back and it does a really good job of protecting her neck from the sun. And we also like these outdoor research hats that have a really full brim on them. So you just want to make sure as much of the neck, shoulders, and face are covered as possible. Another essential for a beach vacation with a kid is sunglasses. When you're shopping for kids sunglasses, look for ones that are both polarized and 100% UV protection. This one comes with matching croquis to help hold them on better so your kid doesn't just lose them at the beach. Even when we're going mostly to the beach, we like to bring our kids goggles as well. My son likes to swim with his goggles when he's swimming underwater in the ocean. And even if you're going to a beach location, chances are your hotel will have a swimming pool. So it's good to bring those goggles to protect your kid's eyes from the chlorine and the bacteria in the pool. Sun protection is super important when you're going to be somewhere near the equator. The sun can be super bright and strong. I personally can get sunburnt in about 10 minutes. So you may think, oh, I wasn't out that long, but then slowly you start realizing your skin is turning red. So you really need to take sun protection seriously. I remember when the Environmental Working Group first came out with their list of natural sunscreens, the article they announced it in first mentioned all the other things you should do to avoid over sun exposure before you resort to sunscreen as a last resort. So things like trying to be in the shade under the nice shade trees, this is really important with super young babies too. You don't want to be having them out in direct sunlight for hours at a time. Also wearing sun protective clothing like we mentioned, like long sleeve rash guards and sun hats. For the bits of skin that are still exposed, you'll want to look for a mineral based reef safe sunscreen. The state of Hawaii has outlawed certain chemicals that are used commonly in sunscreens starting in the year 2021 because some of the chemical ingredients in sunscreens bleach the corals and it's having a really big negative effect on the corals so if you're coming to enjoy the beauty of Hawaii or any beach location you should do your part by choosing a reef safe sunscreen the one we have here it's called raw love 
It's made on the island of Maui. It's a nice mineral-based option. It's lightly scented, smells minty, and you can just rub a little bit of this on. Mineral-based sunscreens do tend to leave your skin looking a bit white, but I don't mind that when I'm at the beach out in the sun. It just gives me reassurance that yes, we do have our sunscreen on. You'll want to do your best to avoid sunburn, but in case you or your kids do get sunburned, it's good to have something along to help soothe a burn. One option to help soothe a sunburn is Surfer Sal. This is a local company and these products are made in Hawaii. So you could purchase them while you're in Hawaii at Island Soap and Candle Works. And this is something that will help soothe a sunburn. It's also good for bites, chapped lips, and minor rashes. Other options other than surface salve include aloe, or maybe you've heard of it as aloe. It's best to use that straight from the plant though. Whenever I've looked for it in the bottle, it's really hard to find it without added color and added chemical preservatives in there. You could also wait until you get to your beach destination and purchase some coconut oil. That can be nice to apply after a shower to soothe your skin. Next up, when you're going on a tropical vacation, you'll want to bring something to help avoid bug bites and something to use in case you get bug bites. So somewhere like Hawaii, once you leave the beach and head off into the jungle on a hike, there are a lot of mosquitoes. So again, you can do things like wear long sleeves to try to help prevent bug bites, but bring along some kind of bug repellent. This is Badger's Anti-Bug Balm with citronella and rosemary. It's certified organic and it has all natural ingredients. So I personally feel a lot safer using this than often recommended deep based bug repellents. You wanna smell it? What's it smell like? It smells good. It smells oh, like citronella. And also, this place is filled with mosquitoes in the first place. Yeah, our bathroom's full of them. When we go out to dinner at six o'clock in the open air restaurant, the mosquitoes are just attacking us. But this is great for our babies or toddlers. My one-year-old toddler is always asking for the bug balm. She likes to apply this herself. Just make sure to wash hands afterwards so little ones don't rub it in their eyes. Now, if you do get some mosquito bites, we like to use tiger balm to soothe them. I also showed you a little while ago the surfer salve. You could use that on bug bites as well. But this tiger balm, whoo, it kind of smells like Vicks Vapor Rub. It clears up your respiratory system. Let me try it. It smells Gingery. We purchased this Tiger Balm in Thailand, but you can buy it in the US on Amazon as well. And this is a great way to soothe any bug bites. Lately, if my kids have been getting some bad ones, my toddler likes to put on some of this Tiger Balm first and then put a Band-Aid over the mosquito bite just to prevent her from scratching it so much that it starts to bleed and go raw. So try to avoid the sunburn, try to avoid the bug bites, but they're somewhat inevitable, so be prepared for when you do get those. Another thing to keep in mind is even if you're going to a hot tropical destination, it's good to bring at least one thin, lightweight, long sleeve shirt. Say you arrive in beautiful Hawaii, you're having such a great day at the beach the first day, and then you wake up the next morning with a terrible sunburn, you don't realize that you got overexposed to the sun, you're gonna wanna have some way to cover up and not be too exposed to the sun the next day. So make sure each of your kids and yourself have at least one long sleeve. I really like to stick with natural fibers when visiting a tropical climate. This shirt is merino wool, but also a thin, lightweight, cotton like pima cotton you could stop by the crazy shirts store or the crazy shirts outlet in honolulu hawaii if you want to pick up a really thin lightweight pima cotton long sleeve shirt to help for sun protection before you go on your beach vacation it's a good idea to check the local weather places like california where i'm from a lot of people have this idea that it's always sunny california it's always hot and warm but a lot of the coastal areas in california are really cool they can have quite a bit of fog and cool off a lot in the mornings and the evenings. So you definitely want to bring along at least one lightweight sweater. For us, these sweaters are also great to wear on the airplane because of the air conditioning. And then when you arrive somewhere like Hawaii, you might want to wear this inside the air conditioned mall or on the super cold air conditioned bus. On the island of Oahu, sometimes we'll take the bus from Honolulu over to Kailua spend the day at the beach and then hop on the bus to go back. 
and inevitably they have the air conditioning blasting so cold on the bus that all these tourists who've been swimming at the beach all day are like freezing and wrapping themselves up in a beach towel. So <laughs> bring along a sweater for whether it might be a little bit cooler weather or you just need it for air conditioning situations. And of course you want to pack clothes, pajamas, neither diapers or underwear as well. Depending on where you'll be staying on your beach vacation, you may or may not need to bring along your own beach towels. If you're staying in an all-inclusive resort, they're probably all provided. And I wouldn't recommend packing your suitcase full of super thick beach towels anyways. If you're going somewhere like a hostel in Southeast Asia, you'll be expected to bring your own towel. And in that case, I recommend bringing something super thin, like these Turkish Peshte Mall. They're super thin, lightweight, they're 100% cotton, so all natural. They absorb well and you can squeeze it out and hang it up to dry. So whenever we're traveling, we bring one of these along. Even if the Airbnb we're staying in provides towels, we've still found uses for this. It's just lighter weight for bringing to the beach. Sometimes we've used it as a floor towel if we needed an extra towel. I've even used it to wrap around my shoulders to give me a little sun protection if the kids were staying out at the beach longer than I wanted to be there. So these are super great. I'll link to them below. We got this years ago on Amazon and it's something we're really glad to have along. I much prefer it to the travel towels that are made out of synthetic material and it's big enough to use as a beach towel. While you're on your beach vacation, you'll probably be spending a lot of time out in the sun and heat. And so it's great to bring along an insulated stainless steel water bottle. This is my daughter's, it has a straw lid, and the rest of our family members have hydro flask, double vacuum sealed insulated stainless steel water bottles. These stay cool really well, especially if you fill it up in the morning with water, juice, tea, whatever, and add some ice cubes. This can stay cold all day long. If you were to bring a plastic water bottle to the beach and leave it on your beach towel, that thing is going to heat up, it's not going to taste good to drink, and the chemicals from the plastic water bottle are gonna to start to leach into the water. So I definitely recommend bringing along an insulated water bottle. Along with insulated water bottles, I also like to have an insulated cooler bag. This is a really small one. It's a small size, so young linen insulated cooler bag, and we can put an ice pack in here. I also used to have a bigger, like grocery bag size cooler bag. Great for keeping your snacks cool while you're at the beach, because that sun, it will just heat things up and bake them. So if you want to bring any snacks like watermelon, fruit, yogurt, something that should stay a little cool, I highly recommend an insulated snack bag. And now my son's helping out with this next one. When you're going on a beach vacation with kids, please think about the local ecosystem and bring eco-friendly beach toys. One option is to bring something made out of coconut, or maybe you can get it as a souvenir at your destination. On Amazon they have like a little shovel and rake type set that's made out of bamboo. You could also get beach toys. This one isn't specifically a beach toy but it's made out of biodegradable plant-based plastic so at least this can break down. What a lot of people don't consider is that plastic beach toys often get washed out to sea and I think we're all becoming more aware of the issues that plastic is causing in our oceans. So we don't need a whole bunch more plastic beach toys washed out to, into the ocean. If you're gonna bring a beach toy, bring something that will biodegrade. Another option is to go all minimalist, forego the beach toys, and just let your kids play with the sand, shells, rocks, sticks, leaves, whatever they find. I find my kids can entertain themselves just fine, even without toys. For your family vacation, you'll wanna bring along something like a GoPro, a waterproof video camera to Capture all those special <laughs> moments of your crazy silly little ones and all the crazy silly things they do. They're bound to get wet. You don't want them getting your camera or video camera wet on vacation and ruining it. The GoPro has all these different attachments like this handle. We also have a band for wearing it on our forehead or we can wear it on our chest. So if you're going to be out doing some action packed cool stuff or maybe snorkeling, swimming, kayaking, and you will want to have a camera that can get wet. To pack all your beach essentials, bring along a beach bag. This is a Logan and Lenora beach bag. Their products are made in Denver, Colorado in the USA. They're great quality and highly functional. The inside is waterproof lining and then it has an outer and an inner waterproof pocket. 
So I love taking this to the pool or the beach because once my kids change out of their wet swimsuits, I can just put all the wet stuff into one of these waterproof pockets and then I'll put their dry clothing into the other waterproof pocket and it keeps everything separate and it helps prevent needing to bring a whole lot of wet bags along. This option is just a super simple beach bag style from Logan Lenora. I also have a Logan Lenora Weekender, which I'll link my video showing how I pack that one as a carry-on bag for flying with kids. It's great to bring along a bag like this that can function as a beach bag, but it can be multi-purpose. You could use it as your carry-on bag, you could use it as your reusable grocery shopping bag when you go grocery shopping for snacks and other beach essentials. Bring along some shoes that can get wet, either some sandals or some water shoes that are made out of like that mesh material. I'm not a huge fan of flip-flops, but if you do get flip-flops for kids, it's nice to have this strap on the back that helps hold them on their feet better. You'll also want to bring along some good walking shoes, especially if you're going to be going for hikes. You don't want to be trying to go up diamond head with your little one in flip-flops. So bring both a good pair of beach shoes and a good pair of walking shoes as well. For example, bring a life vest. If you'll be going on kayaks, any boating excursions with a young toddler, it's a good idea to bring a toddler size life vest. We've gone on a lot of snorkeling trips where they had child sized life vests, but they're often not small enough versions for a young toddler. So we purchased this one on Amazon back when Kaisha was a toddler and now his sister's using it. It's for 30 to 50 pounds. You'll be going snorkeling on your trip. You may want to bring along your own snorkel masks and fins, especially if you have a set that fits your young children particularly well. But you also could keep in mind that a lot of snorkel trips provide the snorkel masks and fins as part of the trip. And also if you're gonna be visiting somewhere like Hanauma Bay on Oahu, you can rent snorkels and fins there. If you choose to bring a stroller, I recommend a stroller wagon so that you can use it to haul all your beach gear to the beach. While we were living in Hawaii, we loved having the Vera Cruiser stroller wagon and we were able to pull it out onto the sand. Another optional item is to bring a sun shelter, those big things that look like half a tent that really helps provide some shade. Those are great if you have a young baby who just shouldn't be out in the full sun all day at the beach. We used a Coleman sunshade for years and we really liked that. It was pretty easy to set up and it was nice to have some shade along because some of the beaches, there aren't really trees around and it's just really bright and sunny. If you'll be visiting Hawaii, there's a lot of parks and it's nice to sit out in the grass but the grass is often damp. So if you plan to spend some time out in the parks, it's nice to bring along a picnic blanket with a waterproof layer on the bottom. So you can sit there without the moisture seeping through and getting you wet. Here's an insider tip. If you'll be visiting Honolulu, Hawaii, there is a Costco wholesale that's located between the airport and the Waikiki beach area. So when you arrive, you might wanna head straight to Costco to stock up on things like sunscreen, snacks, snorkels, beach towels, anything that you weren't able to get at home or you just didn't want to take up room in your suitcase. I hope you found these tips of what to pack for Hawaii or any beach vacation with a baby toddler or kid helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more packing tips and travel inspiration. We upload a family travel vlog every Sunday. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful time on your vacation.